Hi, I'm Brittany Burns, and I'm going to present to you the murder, dismemberment, boiling, and disposal of Julia Martha Thomas, which was also known as the Barnes Mystery and the Richmond Murder. On March 2nd, 1879, Julia Martha Thomas was murdered at her home in cold blood by Kate Webster. Kate Webster was a new employee of Julia's. In fact, Kate was hired as a servant of Mrs. Thomas's after a reference from a friend on January 29th, 1879, just a little over a month before Julia's murder. It makes someone wonder how could, in just a month, did Kate get to the decision to murder her employer? Was it provoked? Was it planned from the beginning? Was Kate really a murderer? Kate Webster was a well-known criminal, but not for any murders. She also had many aliases that she went by. Some of them included Webb, Webster, Gibbs, Gibbons, and Lawler. She was first caught for larceny and was imprisoned in December of 1864. At the time, she was only 15 years old. But this was only the beginning of a large line of criminal activity. February 1868, she was again arrested for larceny and was sentenced to four years of penal servitude. Kate Webster just couldn't learn that you shouldn't steal and in May of 1875 was arrested again, but this time for 36 counts of larceny. 36 counts after she had already served enough time in prison to realize she didn't want to go back. For the 36 counts of larceny, she was sentenced to 18 months in prison. When she was released, Kate Webster went back to her old ways, and a short time later in February of 1877, was again arrested for larceny and served another 12 month sentence. To me personally, it sounds like Kate Webster was actually an undiagnosed kleptomaniac. Of course, that is just my speculation on the situation. When she got out, she landed a position working for Mrs. Thomas in January of 1879. Julia Martha Thomas at the time of her death she was 54 years old. She had lived through the deaths of two husbands. After the death of her second husband, she began to travel more without notifying her family or friends and would disappear for weeks or months on end. She of course was a lady and always wanted to be seen as middle class, but was not as wealthy as she was perceived to be. To be middle class is to have a servant. But Mrs. Thomas was not just a dignified middle-class woman like she was trying to convince others she was. Myth Mrs. Thomas was not talked about well with her choice words and harshness to servants. She actually had a hard time keeping one for any length of time because of her frequent trips with no notice. Many would have said she was a very eccentric lady. Mrs. Thomas hired Kate Webster in January of 1879. In the quiet neighborhood at two vines, vine cottages, Richmond, London, on March 2nd, 1879, Mrs. Thomas was walking up the stairs of her home when she was attacked by Kate Webster. You see, earlier that afternoon, Mrs. Thomas was mad at Kate for slacking at her duties, and Kate was mad at Thomas for firing her. So after a church event, they both arrive home. Julia walks up the stairs and Kate attacks. Kate threw Miss Thomas down the stairs, but this fall did not kill Mrs. Thomas. Kate choked Mrs. Thomas after her fall to prevent her from screaming, resulting in Julia Martha Thomas's death. But that wasn't the end of this horror. Once Kate realized what she had done, she set off to dispose of the body but dismembering Mrs. Thomas first with her head and then onto the other limbs. She then boiled Mrs. Thomas's body, burned the bones, and packed her remains, placing the head in a gladstone bag, one foot in another, and the body in a corded wooden bonnet box. 
Kate Webster wanted to hide the murder of Mrs. Thomas and sought to dispose of the body. She hid Mrs. Thomas's head or threw it in the Thames. Then had assistance with disposing the body off of the Richmond Bridge. Kate thought she had gotten rid of everything and did not think she would end up getting caught. After all, how could they identify a boiled body with no bones and no head that she threw into the Thames? Some rumors even say she tried to sell the drippings of Mrs. Thomas, but this was never proven. The next day, the remains of Mrs. Thomas washed up on the shore and was taken to the police station, all except the head and the foot. The foot, found in another city, was also turned into the police. Kate Webster could now use this moment to create a new alias. She walked around for two weeks dressing and acting like Mrs. Thomas. She would wear her actual clothes and introduce herself as Mrs. Thomas. She did travel and visit family and friends, feeding them a story that she got married to a man and was now a widow, and her aunt gave her a home in Richmond. Kate's lies quickly caught up with her, and she decided to when she decided to sell Mrs. Thomas's furniture, and the neighbors realized she was assuming Mrs. Thomas's identity. Kate was soon caught on March 29th and was taken to trial. Kate Webster's trial was a short six-day trial, starting on July 2nd, 1879. Considering the evidence at Mrs. Thomas's home, it was a very simple ruling. Kate did, however, try three times to blame the crime on others, her efforts were knocked down. On the last day of the trial, Kate tried to save herself from being given the de death sentence and to tried to proclaim she was pregnant. The judge decided to put together a small group of women watching the trial to examine Kate Webster to see if she was with child. The verdict was that Kate Webster was lying again. And on that verdict, Kate Webster was sentenced to death. On, Ju on July 28th, Kate Webster spilled the beans on the whole murder. She told them how it started, how she killed her, and how she cooked the body of Mrs. Thomas. The one thing she did not tell was the location of Mrs. Thomas's head. The next day at 9 a.m., Kate Webster was hung, and a black flag was raised at Wan Wandworth Prison, indicating the execution had, in fact, been carried out. The murder of Mrs. Thomas had quite a following during trial. Many came to see Kate Webster and to oversee the trial. Many ads and newspapers were writing about this great Victorian murder because of the murderer being a woman. During this time, women were thought of weak and frail. Kate Webster defied the views that society had on a woman, making it very interesting piece in history and very interesting during that time period. Also, the place of the murder was vacant for many years after due to the murder taking place there. In October of 2010, Mrs. Thomas's head was discovered. Sir David Edinburgh and his wife bought the Hole in the Wall pub, which Kate Webster frequented back in the day. David was re renovating the pub when workers found a dark object. This dark object was indeed the head of Mrs. Thomas. They even did carbon dating to prove the years and found that it showed signs of being boiled, as Kate Webster had detailed in her confession. The death of Mrs. Thomas was a true horror story and was considered a mystery until 131 years later. Kate Webster was a true murderer and was rightful to be hung for her actions. Seriously, how could someone be okay with killing and boiling a person and then walk around, that, uh, walk around as them the next day? Kate Webster was a true Victorian monster.